And to today's other issue in the news, you know funny how geopolitics operates. For the longest time, experts say China has stood by the reclusive state of North Korea. But as in anything in life, there are limits, and one should not push his or her luck. And as the South China Morning Post reports, North Korea's current leader, Kim Jong-un, may just have pushed his luck too far. Chinese President Xi Jinping is breaking with tradition this week on his first trip as president to the Korean Peninsula. That's because he will be visiting Seoul before he goes to ally North Korea. It's a decision which analysts see as a strong sign of Beijing's displeasure with Pyongyang. President Xi's visit on July 3rd will make him the first Chinese leader to visit the South before the North. Analysts say the trip is seen as a measure of Beijing's frustration at North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's perceived stubbornness. The announcement also comes following a weekend test by North Korea of Scud-type ballistic missiles from its eastern coast in violation of the United Nations sanctions on its weapons program. South Korean officials said the missiles traveled about 500 kilometers and crashed into the sea. North Korea fired three other short-range projectiles into the sea on June 26th and a series of ballistic and other rockets this spring. Well, that included one that passed close to a Chinese passenger jet. Now, with dialogue between the two Koreas and multi-nation talks over North Korea's nuclear weapons program at a standstill, analysts said South Korean officials hope to encourage China to use its economic leverage over Pyongyang and to gradually downgrade its ties to the north. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Ching Gong said, China upheld an impartial spirit towards both Koreas, but added that the coming visit would take the strategic cooperative partnership between China and South Korea to a new level. China supported the North in the 1950-53 Korean War and established diplomatic ties with the South only in 1992. But China is now South Korea's top trade partner, absorbing about a quarter of its exports. Now, you know what? Read between the lines. Who's your daddy? While China and North Korea are ideologically similar, pragmatism on China's part may have taken hold, as the Shandong Business Daily reports. The so-called traditional strength between China and South Korea is economic and trade cooperation. Analysts say President Xi might push for a China-South Korea free trade arrangement. When Xi met South Korean President Park Geun-hye in March, he said both sides need to maintain high-level communication. For her part, Park also said she hopes they could settle FTA negotiations as soon as possible. Analysts also explained that regional issues might have influenced Xi's decision to visit South Korea first. They said she is concerned with maintaining stability in the area, especially with disputes in the East China Sea. But an expert from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences said stability of the Korean Peninsula still tops the agenda. He said both countries will insist on a nuclear-free peninsula and restart stalled six-party talks. Now, the six-party talks aimed at denuclearizing North Korea has been stalled since late 2008. That's when Pyongyang walked away from the negotiating table. The forum involves the two Koreas, the United States, China, Russia, and Japan. Others said China may be capitalizing on friction between South Korea and Japan over historical issues and Japan's attempt to rearm. Well, we will certainly be watching how this plays out, knowing South Korea is a staunch and loyal ally of the United States. And that's Around the World. But up next, local China stories on our regional roundup.